G'day guys, welcome back to another video. So, I thought I was going to have this U-Butte, Travel North, Central Queensland, Catch Heaps of Fish video for you this week, but the trip just did not pan out. So Buster and I drove north, we got as far as Rocky, fished on our way up, fished up there for a couple of days, and it just didn't happen for us. So we got bugger all fish, when I say bugger all fish, I mean like bugger all fish. Um, but we had a bit of saving grace in that we stopped in on Mondrian on the way up and caught some fish there. So got a bit of footage out of that. Probably not enough to make a full video, like a, a decent video. So what I thought I would do is I would sort of put something together that shows what lures I suggest to take at the moment, how I fish them, what I look for in the dam and that sort of stuff. I had a like a, an unreal response to the last Mondi video I did. So I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, but I got a lot of questions out of it. So people sort of asking where the fish are, what am I throwing, why am I throwing them, that sort of stuff. So I figured if I break down some lures, some rods, or oh, nearly bust the tip off, why I throw specific stuff, might be information that people are after and might help people catch fish when they're up at the dam. So we'll get into that and hopefully you learn something. Cheers. Oh. Oh. Um. Right, I might kick this off with lure suggestions. So I think I've got what like, one, two, three, four. So four lures that I suggest you take to the dam with you to the Mondrian. Um, uh, try that again. Righto, so I think I'll start off with lure suggestions. So four lures that I suggest, oh, four and a bit, I guess, um, that I suggest that you take with you to Mondrian Dam at the moment. So currently water's still warming up. It's not super hot yet, but it's getting there. So all those fish are still really shallow. Like a lot of fish were catching a sort of sub three meters, even sub two meters. Um, fish pushing up right into shallow bays and shallow points and they're feeding pretty hard. So. Uh, very popular one for me lately has been the Molluxes. They've always been good up there, really. Maybe if I get my fingers out of the way. Ow! 120 on the top, 140. I've been throwing way more 120s lately just because they are that bit lighter. So don't sink as fast. Therefore, like not plumbing the bottom when you're only throwing them up into two foot of water to start cranking them back off a bank. Um, but you can also wind them a little bit slower. So when the 140s with the weight in, they plumb in a little bit harder, you've got to sort of move them a little bit quicker to get them up and going. Um, whereas the 120 just seems to be that really good size, really good weight that you can get a slow roll happening. Um, and yeah, the fish belt it. So I did a video on the last one. Everyone would have seen people doing customization on Molluxes, but chopping the two bottom fins off, taking the treble and the blade off to swap them out to... A decent treble so their size two ys 81s i think i've got size ones on the 140 um might even be one o's um but the ghost bass has been really good perch is good as well uh that's about all i've used this season I haven't had to change so that's been pretty successful for me I have no idea what's going on here. I think I've foul hooked one, eh? <laughs> I'm going to ready. Uh, I don't feel that big. I have no idea what's going on. This could be a catty. But I feel like I've foul hooked it. I just like, plastic was swimming and I hopped it. And then it was just like... Now that's the thing, it didn't even go to the door. 
It was just weight. It's moving fast. It's strange, whatever it is. Yeah, I reckon it's going to be a huge caddy, eh? That was a little jundy. That was so weird. Thanks for that. Uh, could you not? That was. He's eating it, yeah, it was just real strange. The, the lure felt like it was tangled. Yeah. So I hopped it and then. I don't know. I'm very much unsure of what was going on there. Oh, that is so hot. Ow. to start with that was very weird i didn't know what was going on i thought i'd found a hook or hook the caddy anyway that's a i'll hold that out jimmy that's a good jd mate 65 centimeter fish see you put um number two a jerk bait so these things run real out of the box so this is a 78 xd pointer that color is striped shout i believe um out of the box with good hooks and they suspend. So I've got a bit of underwater footage, I've got a demolix too, so I'll throw that in somewhere. But these things will suspend straight out of the box. So there's plenty of other hard bodies out there that you can tweak and tune and they catch plenty of fish, don't get me wrong. But the ability to buy something at 30 odd bucks, tied on, the only thing I've changed there is taking the split ring off and just loop not to it, I do that with everything. But to tie it on, throw it, and not have to worry about changing hooks or getting something to suspend when you get to the dam or doing the work before to work out what hooks a lure needs to suspend, super handy. I mean, you can have a few of them in your box, chuck them, and you know that they're just gonna sit level in the water. There's a lot of stuff out there that either sits bum first or sinks or floats or whatever, but they are very, very handy. Um, I caught a few fish on them on the weekend, smaller fish, but have caught big fish in the past. It's just the way that it went when we were up there. So I'll roll a couple of clips of that. Um, they're good as well in that because they suspend so well, I'll bring it back, because they suspend so well, you can just tweak them in a spot. So one of these fish that I got was on a lay down and I could see him on the scope and kept working him. And when you've got a lure that floats or sinks or whatever, it's hard because if it's sinking, it's gonna get stuck on the lay down. Whereas if that thing sits perfect, you know, all you can do is impart little tweaks in it then it can sit in the fish's face for a long period of time. That fish is sort of coming on and off the lay down to look around, and he's going to eat it eventually like he did. <laughs> yeah, that's a good fish. Oh, I've been watching him for ages on that lay down, eh? Just like pitching at him and twitching him. Oh, it's not even big. What the f how about you end a little one out of that? <laughs> yeah, I did it. I'd seen those fish swimming over that lay down for about 15 minutes. Just headbutted it too, eh? Full blown headbutt by it. Just keep casting them in, there's a lot of fish down there, so like one can often like liven them up. So we're like just out here? Just out here, yeah, there's a lay down, they keep sort of cruising on and off it. Now, Brady's not loving you, eh? It is not right now. Nasty here. There we go. Didn't really need to get that fish in the boat. Bad juju. Jeez, when he took off, I thought he was going to be good. Ah! Come on. 
There's another fish on the pointer, but no big ones yet today. Um, lure number three. Have to be a slickery. So big fan of white lightning, big fan of black and gold, but that thing there is a killer. So we rigged them up with their TT uh, internal hook. So you pull the old, like the original slicky hook out and put that in there. They've then got a um, swivel on the bottom of them. So you can rig them up. We do a little bit with the tail to make them swim better and stuff, but you have to have a slick rig if you go on the dam. But everything else is quiet. They're just a good size, like good profile. Ugly as, but they get eaten. Highly, highly recommend having with you. And last but not least, vibes. So these things are just imitating red claw, or little yabbies, crawfish, that sort of stuff. Um, Tommy Wood actually did a video on this only the other day, so he was talking about them as well. You're not actually vibing them, so you're not doing big lifts and that sort of stuff to actually get the lure shimming. All we're trying to do is just stand them up on their trebles, really. So just little taps of the rod tip. And you're trying to do is basically what I'm thinking in my head as I'm fishing it is I want it to stand up on the trebles. So it's just looking like a little red claw that's sort of shimming along the bottom. Um, and the barrel will come up and you'll feel them tick at it. So it's not necessarily just a big doof. You'll often feel them pick it up and it's almost like they're rolling it around in their mouth. So the fish might rattle it a little bit. And there's been times before where I haven't swung on a fish because I thought it was a caddy, and then a barrow comes to the top and throws a lure and it burns you inside. So if you do get bites on them, even if they do feel like little rattles, make sure you swing on them because they could be big fish. Not super fussed on brand or color can be a little bit sort of, thank you, computer. Color can be sort of important at times, tend to fish a bit of darker stuff, but in saying that, I've caught them on light colored vibes too. But that's sort of a bit of a look at the ones that I've got in the barrow box. Uh, Zeric fish traps, jackals, and that's about all that's in there. Um, have tried the Nomad vibes in there. I've caught fish on them, but they're generally my go-tos. So handy to have. Um, no, the other stuff is all the same. It's just different colours in the Molluxes. So that's a 140 in perch. That thing's caught a ridiculous amount of fish. Um, that's actually got a rattle in the tail too. So fishing like night times on a darker moon. Don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully you can. But I've just used the soldering iron to burn a hole in the tail and then slipped a rattle in there. But they can be handy night times on the darker moon, just helping the fish find that bait. So yeah. Hopefully you get something out of that. Um I'll grab some rods and run you through that. Sweet. Off. Yeah, rod wise. Going up there. No, all good. That is probably my favourite impoundment barra combo that I have and have used. So, oh, hopefully we can see that. Dobbins Fury in a 765, I think they are. Correct? 765, so 7 foot 6, 12 to 25 pound. And that thing I use for just throwing big plastics. So, I say big plastics, 120s, 140 Molexes. Um, throw some seven inch cast steaks on it if I'm throwing that sort of stuff. That's normally like a Wonga and those sort of places. Um, I'll chuck a slicky on it from time to time as well. But just find that you can absolutely boost the cast. You can throw them a really long way. It's a solid rod. It's good fun to fish spin. Um, and I just find that I can find a steady pace with a spin reel better than a bait caster. That's probably more a personal preference than anything. But if you're humming and hiring about giving it a go, the spin stuff, highly, highly recommend. I've got a 5,000 Stellar on that, 50 pound Sunline Castaway. And then I've been running, I left the leader downstairs, uh, 55 pound Snyder as the leader on that fella. Very normally between 55 and 70, depending on the fish. Like if you find that you're getting chewed, which does not happen a lot on that 55, then I'll bump it up to 70. Or if I'm throwing bigger lures, nine inch plus, and I'll throw it on 70, but that 55 is really good stuff. Oh. 
Oh, yep. That's a better one. Yeah, that's a better one. Ah. Ah, ha, ha. You dirty dog. Yeah. I'll try and do this without coming off the tree so we don't have to move. Oh, you're not happy. Yes. No, away from all of that. Away from all of that. Away from all of that. You're not getting to it. No. Nope. Uh -uh. This side. Get off. Come on. Get off it. Calm down a little bit on him now. Oh, no, 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 I'll swing him around again. Just get the net in the water and I'll bring him to you. Yep, slide him in. Yes. Let's bring the other end of the net in. Hoi! Got you, bitch. Oh, it's probably down there. Fuck yes. <laughs> oh, it's on the hill. Lovely. Ah, I love ya. Love ya, love ya, love ya. Looks like ah. a bit of an upgrade from the yep. fucking rats. From the JDs. Oh, you keep casting all sort of thing. Eh? That was just slow roll, man. Like. I was literally just about to say to you, I really want to throw a jerk bait, but I do not want to catch one of these nine million caddies here and it's went da -dum. Yeah. <laughs> well there we go, I had to work for him today. It's like probably that high 90 sort of fish. He wouldn't go a meter, I don't think, but he's real nice. Healthy, jammed on 120 more legs. And I had to go pretty hard at him because I didn't want to come off the tree up that we're tied to, but I need to get bust on. Keep it going. That is prime example out here of just keep casting. Buster and I were talking about it, like, as we were cruising out of the last bay we were in and we were like, oh. That's it, got a bump and grind. Um, and yeah, that's a prime example of it. Like we've sort of been pushing our luck pretty hard all day for fish. We caught a couple of rats, a few jadies. Um, and yeah, it was pretty confident we'd get a bite in the afternoon. Like wind started to pump pretty hard, water's warm. There's been plenty of fish around. But yeah, if you're not out here casting, you're not gonna catch them. So if you go back to camp early or you sit down and have something to eat and muck around, then you're not gonna catch them doing that. Next one over here, jerkbait combo. So that's an original Daiwa Zillion. Any of the new stuff will work, but I really like that thing. Pumps out heaps of drag. It's had a carbon upgrade in it. And that's on an NS Tarantula Edge. So 6, 10, 10 to 20 pound. So it's light, it's short, but it's got plenty of go when you hook a decent fish. Um, I'm generally a fan of longer rods, so sort of that seven foot plus normally. So this is one of the shorter rods I own, but for fishing jerk baits, one, you're not always hitting the surface of the water when you're standing there tapping away at a jerk bait, but you just get good control of you can twitch your lure really well. And it's a great rod to fight fish on, really. Um, it is very light, it is very sensitive, but you've got power there to drag big fish if you need to. Oh. 
just wanting it. I literally wound it down. That's stupid. I was winding it down to then start cranking it and ate it on the burn. That's so dumb. Jump or do something, come on. Even a barrel? Oh yeah, not a little fella. Oh yeah, there we go. Thank you. Oh, and you've just spooked about 30. You absolute coward. <laughs> up the little fellas. Oh, you're making a lot of noise. I do appreciate though the little splash. Yeah it was nice actually wasn't it? A little bit cool. Do you get that one too? Yeah it's getting a bit annoying. <laughs> wouldn't read about it. It's the second fish I've landed, the second time as I've landed my GoPro has gone flat. A little bit slow today but we got another jerk bait. Little fella but they fight, they jump, they carry on. They're good. Pop the hooks out of him before he pops them in me and send him on his way. I normally take a few rods up the dam. I'll take some swim bait rods and that sort of stuff too but these are sort of the three main ones that I'll fish especially at Mondurin. The last one is that bloke there. So it's a Dobbins Caden, uh, 714, so again, 20, 10 to 20 pound. It's a seven foot one. Um, I have had the butt extended on that one. Um, and that was just a feel thing. So the Ryoga is a pretty decent size reel. And I just wanted a little bit more balance in it. So got a bloke on the coast to do that. And I love that thing for vibes. It's a great vibe rod, especially in the dam. You got a vibe rigged on there. The other two rods, so the jerk baits and the plastics, I'll normally run a mono leader, so that's Snyder. Whereas if I'm fishing a vibe, obviously you're wanting your vibe to get to the bottom relatively quickly and stay down there with those little ticks. The fluoro just helps it sink. So fishing a fluorocarbon leader on that, that's 60 pound uh, FC 100. That stuff's as tough as. So they're not chewing through that. They might, but they shouldn't. Uh, yeah, Daiwa Ryoga on that one, that thing's been bulletproof. Really has. 50 pound sunline on all of them. I didn't say about that on the Ryo on the doing sorry but yeah all of them running 50 pound cast away and then just the leader varying slightly so that's combo number three generally have lures rigged up when i get to the dam so i'll have leaders already sort of stretched on rods so you'll see that oh, hopefully you can see it on camera leader there leader not up there but the lures the sorry not the lure the leader is kept tight so the leader stretched out for the drive up there Obviously, if you bust something off, then you're going to have to retie, but really, really try to stretch your leaders out. Pull them tight. Even if you've got to like hang on them and rub them through your fingers, it burns your fingers a bit, but just to soften the leader a little bit, get it straight, because when you've got lures in the water, vibes, jerk baits, that sort of stuff, if you've got anything that's coiling up, it's going to drag the lure around, whereas if your leaders are straight, it's going to help them to hold in one spot. So just little tips like that can make all the difference, especially when the dams are getting more pressure and the fish are sort of seeing more stuff. It can be those one percenters that can... Make the difference between you catching a fish or no fish or you might catch 10 to another boat's one just with little stuff like that so it's worth paying attention to all right the last bit i said i'd cover was like where to fish or not where to fish i guess but but sort of finding fish so I had a lot of people message me and say sort of oh like where are they what are you looking for is there lots of fish around the answer is yes so most bays you go into at the moment at Mondra and have fish in them. So the the numbers of fish in there is pretty incredible. You pull onto any sort of windblown point or bank and there's normally a decent school of fish there. So finding them is not the issue. Uh, finding feeding fish can be the drama in some instances. So the general rule of thumb has always been find a windblown bay or a windblown point. Um, 
yes, that's true, but not always. So a windblown bay that holds fish might not be just a windblown bay. So you might pull into something, it might be six meters deep. That's not the sort of thing people are talking about. So talking about gradual sloping banks, uh, like I said earlier, something in that sort of uh, one to three meter range at the moment seems to be holding pretty good fish. Um, and the same with points. So you're not looking for a deep rocky point. That's not what people talk about when they talk about or like a windblown point. Same deal. So a gradual point, gradual slope, moving from like a foot out to maybe three meters and then coming into a bit of a flat is generally where you'll find your fish. They sort of like access to deep water so they can move away and digest or move away after a bite period, whatever that may be. And then they've got easy access to get back onto the flat to where they're feeding. So it tends to be a pretty important one for where I, where I find fish anyway. Again, all of this is this is not a hard and fast guarantee. This is how I break the dam down, the things that I use and work for me. There's probably people out there that do it totally different that catch plenty of fish as well, but this is what works for me and may work for you if you sort of impart a couple of these things. Um, I'll throw a couple of clips in of sort of bays and stuff like that that I mean, like just I'm going through all the stuff that I may be fishing that might give a, a bit of an explanation as to what I mean by like a gradual slope and the wind pushing on there and that sort of stuff. You'll find areas that the wind will push along. So it might be a bank that's copying wind on a bit of an angle. So instead of the wind coming straight onto a bank, it might be copying on a bit of an angle. So that bank might not be great, but that might push a lot of wind and wind current into a particular bay. So if you've got a bay that comes down, the wind's hitting it, it might funnel it into an area. Uh, I'm sure I'll have bits of footage on there where I can sort of drop that in maybe here as I talk about it. Um, that'll show what I mean, but yeah, wind funneling into bays, just areas that are getting a lot of wind because the wind will drive warm water, it'll drive, it'll aerate the water as it hits the bank and creates a bit of wave. Um, so there'll be nutrients there, there'll be bait fish there, and yeah, the warmth is what you're looking for. So hopefully this information helps, guys. Um, yeah, if it does help you get up the dam, you catch some fish, or you're going, you think it's useful, hit subscribe. Makes a big difference. I'm so close to a thousand subs, uh, which is unreal, but yeah, every little bit helps. So please do smack that subscribe button. Um, yeah, hopefully this has been an educational video, I guess you could say. Hopefully it's helped some people or maybe made people think about it a little bit differently and helps them get up and catch some fish. But if you're going, it's good at the moment. If you're not going, you probably should be. So get up there, have some fun. Good luck. Cheers. We'll see you in the next one.